Awesome. Welcome everyone to UC Berkeley's virtual campus visit. Thank you for taking an hour out of your day to be here with us and to learn everything about Berkeley, especially if you're on your spring break. Thank you for hanging with us on your spring break. If you're not on your spring break yet, you're almost there. You get a week off, hopefully, so yay. Um, but so without further ado, I can introduce myself. So I'll be your moderator for today. And my name is Casey. I use the pronouns he, him, his. And my hometown is Long Beach and I'm currently in Long Beach for spring break. Um, I'm also a senior, just getting ready to graduate. And I major, I'm majoring in chemistry. And so now I'll tell you guys a little bit about the tour. So this tour is going to be a 45 minute presentation. And as you can see, the chat is disabled. So anything you want us to see, any questions you have, please type them out in the Q&A section. We have ambassadors, they'll answer it live at the end. And also ambassadors, they'll answer your question in the Q&A section. So please type out all your questions when they occur. So you don't like have to keep storing them in your brain. Type them out whenever. There'll also be polls throughout this tour. So if you see a poll pop up on your screen, please answer that poll. Usually we would have you guys answer those polls, you know, ask the questions in person, but you know, can't do that. So polls are the only way we really know what you guys are what the demographics are. Um, also, this virtual visit is recorded, although a different version of this visit is available on our website. So if you happen to miss any information or you wanna go back and just hear the same information but told a different way by other ambassadors, you can check out our website. And the overview of this tour is um, from the student perspective. So there are no admissions or financial aid information available on this tour. We can kind of direct you to the right resources. If you do have questions about that, so you type it out in the Q&A and we'll get that squared away. And so it was a 45 minute presentation. The last 15 minutes of the hour are we're going to be a Q question and answer portion. So like I said, please ask all your questions throughout the tour, no matter when you ask, we'll try to answer that during our live question and answer portion. And we'll do our best to answer all the questions live. And if not, we have ways to figure out how to answer those questions you have even after the tour. So with that, I will pass it off to our two guides for the day, Naoma, Naomi and Seneca. <laughs> Oops, I was muted. Thank you, Casey. Hello, everyone. Hope you've been having a great week so far. My name is Naomi. Yes, the picture is different, but it's a, it's still the same me. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm a third year legal studies major, but I am trying to graduate this semester. Fingers crossed. Um, I was born in the Philippines, grew up in Chicago, but I am from Richmond, California. I got in-state long enough to be considered in-state for tuition. Yay me. <laughs> So in terms of my involvement outside of the lecture hall and Zoom rooms, I teach my own class here, which we'll talk about later on in the virtual visit. I'm also involved in the Cal Spirit groups as a mic man, which is where we pretty much lead cheers in front of like a bunch of people or like a Zoom crowd in virtual rallies that we are doing now. And I also have participated in undergraduate research through the legal studies department. Great to meet you all. Awesome. Thank you, Naomi. Hello, everybody. My name is Seneca, and I use the pronouns she, her, hers. I am from Goleta, California, which is a small town on the central coast of California, and I am also a third year here at Cal, a junior graduating next year. I'm majoring in molecular and cell biology with a minor in bioengineering, and a few of the things that I'm involved in outside of the classroom are Greek life. I'm also in a bioengineering organization called Bioprinting at Berkeley, which basically is a whole student-run research project where we've modified a 3D printer to actually print constructs that hold cells to some bit, someday be able to 3D print organs, which I think is just the coolest thing ever. I'm also involved in the dance community here at Cal during a typical semester. I do both hip hop and contemporary dance. And lastly, during a typical semester, I'm also on the Cal Greeks Alcohol Task Force, which basically is just an organization that aims to promote safe partying and alcohol consumption practices within the Greek community, mostly centered around education. And I'm super excited to be talking to you all today. All right, my mute, my unmute function isn't working. So anyways, welcome to our virtual visit. We're gonna do our best to um, basically give our campus justice through this virtual visit. So as you can see on the poll on the screen, we're just asking who you are so that we can better cater the tour to you all. But um, well, well, as we get into that, um, I'm gonna look over some of the pictures that you'll see here. First of all, I wanna mention the logo that you'll see on the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. This is the logo for 
150W, which is the celebration we had last year for the anniversary, the 150th anniversary of women first being admitted into Berkeley in 1870, just two years after the founding of our university in 1868. Also, yesterday was Charter Day, which is the day our university was founded, March 23rd, 1868. So it's been 153 years. I think I did my math correctly. So happy belated Charter Day to us. I also want to mention the photo on top of the logo of our football team. Um, as someone who's really involved in Cal Spirit, it's just being at a football game or before the pandemic, um, it was a really fun event to do. And I just really loved um, giving ch leading cheers in front of a bunch of Cal fans, which is really fun. Over on our right, you'll see one of our 27 bear statues on campus. His name is Sturdy the Bear and you'll see him um, in front of the stadium in our in front of our memorial stadium, which is where the football team plays. Usually in in person, we have people play a spot the bear type um, type of game while we give our tours. But you can rest assured that you've seen one of the best statues through our presentation. So just to give you a little bit of an overview of all of the key topics we're going to be covering today, we'll start with a little bit of an overview of Berkeley as a university as a whole, and then we'll dive into academics, we'll talk about housing and dining, health and safety, we'll try and touch on remote learning as well, and we'll go through student resources, student life, athletics, and libraries and research, and then of course remote learning, as I mentioned earlier, we do want to give you a picture of kind of what Berkeley looks like now, and what it will look like in a typical semester, so if you have absolutely any questions about any of those, please do type them in the Q&A and we would be super excited to answer those. Right, so like what Seneca was just saying, we're going to give you a brief overview of Berkeley. So like I said earlier, UC Berkeley was founded in 1868, making us the first UC campus out of the nine right now. We have a lot of names stemming from our position as the original UC. We're also called California, just California. Um, all, our, all our sports teams go by that. We also go by Berkeley, Cal, UC Berkeley. So you'll hear Seneca and I use refer to our university with a lot of different terms. Um, our mascot is the Golden Bears and it is lovingly represented through our mascot, Oski, which you'll see in the photo in the top left-hand corner. He's your favorite anthropomorphic bear that can drink water out of his eye. Yes, you heard me correctly. I can't really explain why though. Um, over to the right of Oski, you'll see a GIF um, giving you a bird's eye view of our campus. Um, in terms of our campus size, we have around 31,000 31, undergraduates and 11,550 graduate students. This is a really large school and even I had trouble adjusting with it at first because even when my graduate class was around 1000, but I really like the size of our school because I'm just always surrounded by a lot of amazing people and amazing backgrounds. And we have a lot of historical landmarks like the fountain that you'll see on the bottom left hand corner as well as Sather Gate in the bottom right hand corner. Fun fact, um, the gate in Monsters University, the Pixar movie was based off Sather Gate. Um, and if I stole that from Seneca, I'm very sorry. <laughs> no, you can actually also see Sather Gate in Ant-Man and the Wasp, so pretty well represented in popular culture. One question that we always get asked is, what's the vibe of Berkeley? Like, what's the student culture like? And it's honestly very difficult to answer because there are just so many different perspectives, different backgrounds and different voices represented at our school that there's just always a lot happening. But I think that one word that really sums up kind of the Berkeley spirit and what unites all Berkeley students is change makers. A lot of us, I mean, most of us on the Berkeley campus are very committed to making change in the world and be that through free speech or leadership, really through challenging the status quo. As you can see on the slide, we actually were the birthplace of the free speech movement in 1964. And this was basically a movement where students wanted the right to be able to speak out about their political beliefs and political causes on campus. But at the time that actually was not allowed across campuses on, around the world, not just Berkeley. And so students held a bunch of peaceful demonstrations on the steps of Sproul Hall, which is a building that would be right through that gate you see in the photo and to your left. 
but students basically held a months long demonstrations. There were conversations between the administration, the faculty, the students, and it ultimately resulted in what we know now, which is the um, free speech uh, right on campus, uh, on campuses across the country. And so this is really manifested through a lot of different ways at Cal, you might see protests, you might see us participating in, you know, acts of entrepreneurship or research and innovation, or even just walking down that area behind the gate there. And during a typical semester, it'll be lined with student tables, and they'll be handing you flyers being like, are you interested in consulting? Have you ever considered joining Rallycom? And so it's really just an awesome way to see where there's all these students with all their passions, and they're really just putting themselves out there, really advocating for the causes that they believe in. And so Personally, that's how I see free speech manifested, but that's also, you know, in things like us going out and participating in pride and participating in Black Lives Matter protests and continual movements to really push our world into a more modern and more welcoming place for all. And so our community is incredibly full of compassion, passion, and social justice. We're committed to spirit and pride. As Naomi has mentioned, she's one of the Mike men. And so I can personally speak from experience that at football games, these people, they are just on it. They really get the student body excited and ready to cheer on our Golden Bears. And it's just a really great representation of the Cal spirit that really I'm super proud to be a part of. There's also a huge commitment to diversity and excellence at Cal. We really are committed to making this campus accepting and welcoming and a safe space for all who enter and also public service. So we have many different things where we're out there trying to serve the community around us. We have people who tutor in public schools around Berkeley and Oakland. We have fundraising and all of that. And so if that is something that's important to you that can definitely be found here at Berkeley. Thank you for that, <laughs> that really nice shout out for the Mike Man Seneca. Um, in terms of the Berkeley culture, um, there's just a lot you can get involved in. As Seneca mentioned, there have been a lot of protests on our campus. Um, I think the protests are integral to a Berkeley experience, but not everyone, but you're not like, I guess, um, required to participate in those protests. If you wanna um, speak your voice, you are welcome to do so through our campus. You'll also see a bunch of pictures here um, depicting innovation and research, which is really integral to our identity as a research institution. And of course, different photos of Cal Spirit. You'll see um, pictures of our band, the cheer, the cheerleaders, our rally committee, um, Oski. I'm not pictured there, but that's okay because all of these different groups have so much Cal spirit with them and it's awesome to work with them. And it's also, it's also awesome to have people like Seneca in the crowd feeding us energy and, <laughs> and just like really giving us the energy to represent Cal, to get, give us the energy to just be ourselves and express ourselves in whatever way that we want. Totally. And we have a really wide reaching global impact that kind of stems from this culture of excitement and passion on campus. And that relates to things like education, where we have a lot of goals relating to access and scalability. As you might guess right now, we are doing classes online. And so that can present challenges. So we have a student technology equity program that is committed to providing students with all of the technology that they need to succeed in their classes. And so that could be things like Wi-Fi hotspots or laptops, webcams, tablets, whatever you need, you can work with that office and they will be able to help you obtain the things you need to succeed in school. We also have remote youth programs going on to really keep the youth out there engaged and thinking about education because it is a definitely weird time to be in education. I know being online is very different from what we've known in the past. And so we're really trying to make sure that people stay engaged and stay feeling connected to the community. We also are a public research institution and we have a ton of COVID research going on, which is super exciting for me as a molecular biology student. So there's all sorts of things like trial testing. We had a few months long saliva COVID test trial going on where they were basically doing free saliva COVID tests um, as part of a trial to see you know, the efficacy of those and just see how they would 
apply in a larger group. We also have just an enormous biological, cultural, and economic impact kind of stemming from that. We have the Innovative Genomics Institute on campus, which is doing a lot of really pioneering work with just COVID research in general, and also a genomics research, which is just my cup of tea. Um, there's also a huge focus on advocacy and social justice, as I've mentioned in the past slides. We are really committed to furthering human rights and anti-racism, and then also targeting resilience, preventing trauma and burnout, because it is a really difficult time to be in this world at the moment. And we just want to make sure that we are there for anyone affiliated with our campus, anyone in general to, you know, kind of be there and support one another. All right, now that we've um, introduced our campus, we're going to go into our academics. We should see a poll launching to see what you all, you all are interested in. Um, so just to give an overview of our undergraduate colleges, we have the College of Letters and Science, which Seneca and I are in. We also have the Rouser College of Natural Resources, the College of Environmental Design, the College of Chemistry, and the College of Engineering. If you're like me um, in my senior year and you don't know what to do, um, that's totally fine. You are um, when you come to Berkeley, you can always transfer between your different ma different majors and different colleges. But for smaller colleges like environmental design, chemistry, and engineering, it may be a little bit more difficult to switch into those colleges. So applying directly to certain colleges may also be of interest to you. So now Seneca will lead us through our first college. Yeah, so the first college we're going to be talking about is the College of Letters and Science, which is Naomi and my home college. It's the biggest one on campus. It houses three quarters of our undergraduate population, and it spans everything from arts and humanities to biological sciences, social sciences, mathematical sciences, and physical sciences, and just so many more things. I think that most of my friends are in this college just because of the sheer volume and offering there. So we actually have 80 plus majors in this college. And one thing that I like to highlight about the College of Letters and Science is that we have a seven course breadth requirement. So basically we take seven courses in seven different subject areas to really just get that liberal arts education. And I personally found it really enriching because it allows me to take things like French literature or Italian literature, sociology, things that I wouldn't really take if I was just doing my molecular and cell biology track. And so it's been a really great way to learn a lot about many different fields while still getting that core technical education for biology. And one little, you know, fun fact, a little minor flex here is that this college actually houses 17 out of our 25 Nobel prizes won by alumni and faculty and affiliates. So it's just really exciting to know that you're being taught by some of the brightest minds, not only, you know, in the country, but in the world. All right, next up we have the Rouser College of Natural Resources. If you take a if you take a glance at the different departments within this college, you may see some overlap with the College of Letters and Science. So just to read off these different departments, we have biological sciences, nutrition and toxicology, ecosystem management, interdisciplinary studies, social sciences, and economics and policy. But what um, makes these uh, departments different is that they're focused on the environment, sustainability, and social justice. So if you're interested in those, um, this college is, is the one for you. I have, I actually am taking a class right now on sustainability and social justice and structural reform with taught by two people who actually um, have majors in this college. So that's really awesome to learn from them. Super cool. Yeah, our next college we're actually going to talk about is kind of related to structures. It is the College of Environmental Design, and it is our smallest college with about 650 students. It houses four majors, so that's architecture, landscape architecture, urban studies, and sustainable environmental design. And it is just a really beautiful college that has a ton of hands-on learning opportunities. As you can see, that is Worc Bauer Worcester Hall, which is the home to the College of Environmental Design. And as you can see, there is a ton of studio space in there. So students in this college always have some sort of studio component where they might be building models 
or they might be learning to design certain things. And it's a really great way to get that hands-on practice for the real world post-graduation. Alumni of this college include people like Julia Morgan, who designed Hearst Castle. And she also designed a lot of buildings in and around Berkeley and Irving Morrow, who actually designed the Golden Gate Bridge, which is, you know, iconic. And you also can see it from campus, which I think is just really, really cool. And the mission of this college is to craft ecologically sustainable and resilient prosperous and fair, healthy and beautifully built environments, which you totally can see in the work that these students do outside of the classroom as alumni. Right, next up we have the College of Chemistry. This is the college for our moderator today, Casey. If you think we were flexing before, um, <laughs> this college is ranked number one in the world for our programs. They have around 1000 students in the college and there is three majors, um, chemistry, chemical engineering, and chemical biology. This college heavily focuses on innovation and research. I remember one time I took a chemistry class and they really emphasize green chemistry in labs. Maybe Seneca can attest to that as well. Um, along with that, 16 elements have been discovered by this university, two of which are Berkelium and Californium, two elements named after our university. And if you've taken high school chemistry, you may be familiar with the Lewis dot structure. Fun fact, one of our faculty um, a century ago, I think his name is Gilbert Lewis, actually invented the Lewis dot structure. And this is how we study chemistry today. So, chem so our College of Chemistry has a massive impact in the world around us. Definitely, I can say I have taken many, many classes in the College of Chemistry, and it is just a fantastic place to be. So too is the College of Engineering, which is our next college we'll be talking about. This is actually where my minor, bioengineering, is housed. So I really love this college. It has about 3,800 students across 11 majors. And one really important piece of advice that we have to give anyone thinking about maybe coming to Berkeley for engineering is to apply directly into this college. So on your application, you'll have the ability to kind of say, which college you would like to apply into and the College of Engineering it does this thing where they you apply and when admitted you are declared so you start taking major classes from the get-go so it is important just you know to be able to be there as a freshman and be taking those classes just so that you don't fall behind and it is a really fantastic college they have a humanities and social science breadth courses so you can really be a well-rounded engineer. There's also a ton of technical courses, including things like math, physics, and actually ethics, which is a, just a really great way to build that technical education. And there's also a separate engineering virtual visit. So if you want to hear a very in-depth breakdown of each of those 11 majors and just generally more about this college, you can go to visit.berkeley.edu and register for that separate engineering visit. I sometimes give that tour, and it is just a great time. We really, really go in depth. And the mission of this college is really to transform the lives of our students by preparing them to become successful leaders and innovators for positive change. So I'll leave that with you as kind of a sneak peek and for the full picture, register for the engineering tour. Yeah, I definitely recommend um, signing up for the engineering tour. If you're interested, you'll get an amazing guide. Maybe not Seneca, but they're all amazing. So as we go, um, as we finish our overview of our undergraduate colleges, I want to quickly mention our graduate schools. First off, we have the Haas School of Business. Um, all of these, um, all of these um, graduate schools, by the way, have undergraduate departments um, where you can study. So for the Haas School of Business, we have Business Administration, Global Management, Biology and Business, and the Management Entrepreneurship and Technology Program, or MET for short. MET is gone, is going, is gone over with much more detail in our engineering visit if you're interested in that. Apart from that, we have the Graduate School of Education, Information, which is the most recent one, Berkeley Law, which I'm kind of considering right now, Social Welfare, Optometry, which um, my optometrist actually graduated from, which is really, um, which is really amazing to think of. And lastly, we have the Graduate Schools of Journalism, Public Health, and Public Policy. Again, all of these um, all of these graduate schools have some undergraduate programs if you're interested in studying those in your undergraduate career. Definitely. I think one advantage also of having graduate students on the same campus is that you really get to interface with them a lot and hear kind of how they got to graduate school. So if that's something you're considering, it's always a good idea to just 
talk to someone who's done it before, maybe get their perspectives and their thoughts on where you're at and maybe good paths for you to go down. I know that that's been really helpful for me with deciding what I want to do after graduation. And one other way that graduate students are just fantastic is that they actually teach a lot of our discussion sections. So basically classes at Berkeley are most, most often broken down into two components, and that is a lecture, which is usually taught by a professor or a lecturer, just kind of giving you all of the information for the class. And, you know, it's a lecture style, so it's definitely more of just absorbing information. But then a discussion is a discussion, whoa, shocker, uh, where you get to go and you really get to speak with your graduate student instructor or GSI or lecturer or teacher. And they will give you problem sets. Maybe they'll kind of break down a reading for you. They'll go over things that were presented in lecture just to make them more digestible so that you understand what's going on that much better. And this can also take the form of lab sections or studios or many other things. So you could be doing experiments. You could be creating all of these really cool architectural models, or you could just be you know, chatting with other students in order to gain a deeper understanding of the material. And this is also shown in office hours, which is basically where any instructors that you have will have a space that's open and you can just head on in and ask them any questions outside of class, just if you need anything to clear up or if you just want their advice. I've gone in there and asked my professors and my instructors about things like going into industry after graduation and what would that look like and what was your experience with it? So it's a really great opportunity to build relationships with instructors and this continues online. I low key think it is a little bit easier online because all you have to do is click a link, no more searching hallways to find that one elusive office that might be on a different floor. So definitely a really great way to build those relationships with faculty despite being at such a large school. Our class sizes are actually incredibly manageable though. We have a 19 to one student faculty ratio with 81% of our classes being less than 50 students. So it is easy to you know, approach those instructors, ask them questions, build relationships. And there are a lot of hands-on courses as I mentioned earlier. We also have a lot of resources for students. So we have the Student Learning Center also known as the SLC. I'm pretty sure I went there like every single day freshman year to get help on my chemistry problem sets. And this is a place where they have free tutoring, they have free essay help, they actually also have a program where if you speak a foreign language and you want to, you know, keep it up by speaking with somebody else who also speaks that language, they can pair you up with someone. I think it's really cool. And then they also have individual advising. So for example, I met with my academic advisor last week through my department to just talk about my senior year course schedule, make sure that I was getting all of those things covered. And there's also advising through, you know, all of the colleges, all of the majors, and also peer tutoring sometimes offered through specific departments. So there are many resources here at Berkeley if you do choose to access them. Yeah, I definitely agree with you, Seneca, on things being easier to access through remote learning and some of you may have these same questions. What is remote learning like at UC Berkeley? So um, for the past year and three months of spring 2020, um, we've been fully remote, um, but our university has been setting goals to um, hybridize and go into in-person classes in line with CDC guidelines. Don't know when that's going to be implemented. Probably won't be around to see those implemented, but I hope it all goes well. Um, in terms of our academic experience, um, the university provides us all with Zoom Pro, so um, I think all I think with Zoom Pro, all of us are able to schedule meetings for an unlimited amount of time that don't cut off within like 30 or 40 minutes, whatever the cutoff is for Zoom. Through this virtual learning space, we've also implemented more asynchronous learning along with our synchro synchronous lectures. Like for example, if I'm babysitting my four-year-old brother and I happen to miss one of my lectures, um, I can go back and watch the lecture asynchronously because of the Zoom recordings, which is really nice for me. In terms of resources, what um, Seneca and I have already mentioned before, it is easier for me personally to go into drop-in tutoring. I can just log on to Zoom and not like go to maybe the physical building of the Student Learning Center or go to my professor's office after months of searching. And it's really nice to have that help just at pretty much at the press of your mouse or your keyboard. 
And we also have Semester in the Cloud, which is sort of um, a more immersive engagement experience for certain cohorts within UC Berkeley. So there's a lot of resources and ways to stay connected with each other through Zoom and virtual learning. Definitely. And now we're going to change gears a little bit and talk about perhaps everyone's favorite topic. Well, at least it's a fun one for me to talk about, and that is housing. So during a typical semester, we have all sorts of different types of housing. You can live in an apartment, you can live in a suite, you can live in a traditional dorm like I did. And there are just many different options and many different locations for dorms. You also just saw a poll pop up on your screen asking where you're from. That is just so that we can, again, tailor this tour a little bit better for you. So for housing, freshmen do get priority for housing. And it's just, I think, a really great experience to live on campus as a freshman because it is a built-in community the second you get there. So if you were like me and you might not know a ton of people going to Berkeley, it can be really helpful just to, you know, build a few contacts, start, you know, making friends. And it is a really, really fun experience. There's residential assistance in all of our dorms. So these are older students that work for housing and they put on all sorts of really cool programming. They'll do things like pizza nights. They will be a really great sounding board to go to if you ever need any advice. If you, they're kind of like an older sibling, but cool, you know, and they're very, they're very committed to making housing a safe and fun place to be for all who live there. There are also theme programs. So these can be identity based or interest based. There's things like the Asian Pacific Islander theme program. There is an African American theme program. There's also Unity House, which is a theme program focused on LGBTQ plus students and allies. And I think that it's just a really great opportunity to live with people who are, you know, have similar interests or a similar background to you if you do want to build your community that way here at Berkeley. There's also common areas during a typical semester where students can gather for studying, playing games. I used to watch movies with my whole floor in our common room. Um, and it's just a really great way to meet people. If you hang out there and you see someone passing by, you're like, hello, let's be friends. There's also laundry rooms and all sorts of, you know, things essential to living. And then we also have a meal plan included. So you do not have to cook when you're in the dorms, which I think is really great. There are tons and tons and tons of different Dining halls, as you can see there on the bottom right hand side of your screen, that is Crossroads and that's the dining hall that I went to. They have all sorts of options. If you're vegan, vegetarian, kosher, halal, if you have any sort of restriction, you can actually talk with the dining hall and they will make sure that there is food for you that you can eat. And I just think it's a really great opportunity. It kind of takes the stress out of it and they have all sorts of food, all sorts of good stuff. And during COVID-19, we do still have students living on campus. It does look a little bit different just because we do want to limit the spread of the virus and make sure that all of our students are safe. So all students live in single rooms this year and they do wear face masks in the hallways whenever they're outside of their rooms, but there are social pods. So for example, it might be a floor or it might be just a cohort of students that are kind of in a pod together and they socialize within that pod to you know, still be able to build the community and have the dorm experience while still being safe and making sure that everyone is staying healthy. Now we're gonna be talking more about housing options for our transfer and continuing students. So for the options, you can go into campus housing. This could be anything from even the residential halls into villages like the UC Village, which is a little ways away from Berkeley, but you can still access it. Um, through the housing application. There's also the international house. Typically international students live here, but you can also apply to live here too. There's also affiliated properties within um, the Berkeley community like Garden Village and the Martinez Commons in Channing Bowditch, which are all pictured within the next three photos that you see here on the slide. There's also off-campus apartments that I that I went into in my second year. Um, I just went off campus with a um, private property manager and lived with three other people. There's also co-op housing, also known as the student cooperative. This is housing you can find at an affordable rate. In exchange, you have to um, work certain hours of work shifts, which could be anything like washing the dishes for the house or vacuuming or cleaning the kitchen, things like that. And last but not least, we have Greek housing. I can't really speak on this as much, but if you have any questions about that, please direct them to Seneca, who is actually in a sorority. With these housing options, you do have the option to enroll yourself in the meal plan. It's not included within 
any leases you may find within these options, but if you would like to enroll yourself in the meal plan, then you'll have to apply separately for that. And if you want more information on anything that Seneca and I have said on housing for either incoming, fr incoming freshmen or transfer students, you can check out housing.berkeley.edu for more information. Them. And you might be thinking, okay, we've talked about housing, we've talked about academics, but what happens if, you know, if I get sick or, you know, if my eyes start to fail me and I need to go to the optometrist. So we have a ton of really awesome health services on campus that includes awesome resources like the Tang Center, which is kind of our student health hub for all of the things on campus. It's that building that is the turquoise and orange building in the bottom right. And it houses things like urgent care, primary care. There's actually physical therapy. There's actually a testing lab where they process like specimens. Um, so I think that that's really cool just to have that localized so that it takes a little bit less time to get results back. And there's a student health insurance plan. All students are required to have health insurance, but if you already have health insurance through your job or through your parents or just However, you can actually waive the student health insurance plan through the university to save a little bit of money. There's, um, there's COVID testing and tracing right now. I get COVID tested twice a week for my sorority because I do live there. And it's really easy. It's free regardless of insurance. And it's basically like a five minute walk away. There's multiple locations. I think it's fantastic. And there's also really cool programming put on in the Tang Center like FAQs, webinars, and tips. They do this thing every Wednesday where they do like a live cooking session. So if you want to learn how to cook, you can actually go there and they'll teach you how to make all sorts of really cool healthy meals. There's also psychological counseling. We have an amazing counsel ugh, counseling and psychological services program called CAPS. I've used it many times and I can honestly say that it is a fantastic program. You can reach out to them at any time. They have a 24-hour line. They have all sorts of stuff and they are there for you and they want to help, especially especially, especially right now. So highly, highly recommend CAPS. There's also the Path to Care Center, which is a confidential resource for survivors of sexual assault and sexual harassment. It is also an outreach um, organization. So they actually come and they do a ton of presentations within Greek life. I've gotten to speak with them multiple times and I can say that they are doing amazing work in the Berkeley community, um, just really raising awareness and making sure that people feel supported and heard in Berkeley. There's also the Optometry Eye Center, which is housed through the Graduate School of Optometry, where you can actually get glasses and contacts for like $10 with the copay for student health insurance, which I think is great. So maybe I'll go there next time instead of Costco, you know, good stuff. And then there's also stress relief resources that are a little bit less, you know, through the health center, there's things like Pause for Mental Health, which is where they bring dogs onto Sproul Plaza, where that big gate that we were talking about earlier is. And you can go play with the dogs, cuddle them on your way to class. They also do the same thing with llamas once a semester, and that is called Llama Palooza. You can snap a selfie with a llama. You can hang out with them. It's just a really fun, lighthearted way to shake your day up a little bit and really just, you know, a fun representation of all of the different resources that we have here for health. Yeah, definitely. Pause for Mental Health and Llama Palooza are some of my favorite events on campus. I had my, my llama selfie was actually my profile picture for like a solid year after I got my llama selfie. But now we're going to go into campus safety services. We have an on campus police department. It's called the UC Police Department or the UCPD for short. On campus, we have over 100 blue light poles. So if you're traversing through campus, maybe at night and you're feeling unsafe, you can walk up to these blue light poles and contact someone if you're feeling unsafe. We also have the warn me notification system. So if there is anything that's going on within campus or the Berkeley community, you'll get a notification through your email and, and through your text um, warning you to, for example, stay clear of this certain area or avoid this certain street because of um, heavy traffic or things like that. So I think every student is um, registered for Warn Me automatically upon, um, upon enrollment, so that's really nice. In terms of security within the residence halls, there's a three-point security system. First is outside the building. You have to swipe your card to get in or I guess touch your card to the sensor. There's also a security monitor at the um, entrance of every building, making sure that everything, everyone that's going in is a guest and if someone or everyone that's going in is a resident. And if someone is bringing a guest that they register with a security monitor so that the security monitor knows who is in the building that's not a UC Berkeley resident. 
Lastly, you'll need to um, touch your card again um, to access the stairway or the elevator. And then lastly, you'll have the key to access your room. So this is a really nice security system um, that keeps you that keeps you and your items safe. In terms of night services, we have Bear Transit and the Night Safety Shuttle. During the day, Bear Transit takes you all around campus, which is really nice when I don't when I feel like I don't want to walk from one side of campus to another. But at nighttime, these night safety shuttles can also deliver you directly in front of residence halls. In my first year um, at Berkeley, I had a I had a class on one end of campus, which was really far from my residence hall, and I just used um, the night safety shuttle to get back safely, which was really really nice. We also have Bear Walk. Um, this is this is a program that was that is run by our UCPD. They train um, students to be community service officers or CSOs for short. And these CSOs can escort you anywhere within like a certain radius of Berkeley. And it's really nice if you want to get home safe and you're not living on campus in these residence halls. Yeah, kind of continuing along the theme of resources that we have available for students, we have a lot of student development resources. So a lot of these are based on identity or community, such as the Centers for Educational Justice and Community Engagement, or the ASUC. So Centers for Educational Justice and Community Engagement are student development programs that are more identity based. They have opportunities for students that are, you know, resources, opportunities, mentorship programs, and just a really great way to get any resources that you might need out of the university. There's also the Associated Students of the University of California or the ASUC. That's our student government and they do all sorts of things with, you know, working with the administration to make sure that students, for example, right now they have um, a, I think, a menstrual equity program where they're trying to get free tampons and pads into bathrooms on campus, which is, you know, fantastic. So definitely they work on things like that that will affect the daily lives of students in a positive way. There's the Transfer Student Center, which provides resources and opportunities to transfer students on campus, and also the same for undocumented students. So we have an undocu uh, undocumented student center. I get excited and sometimes my words don't come out how I want them to. Um, so there's just generally a lot of really awesome resources so that you really just do feel supported here at Berkeley, no matter who you are. There's also support and equity services, such such as the disabled students program. So this program provides things like note taking or they will allow for extended test accommodations. For example, if you have you know, two times test accommodation, you'll have four hours to do a um, two hour test, which can be really helpful. They also do captioning and all sorts of things. We actually, in one of my classes right now, have a captioner that comes to lecture in real time with us and types out all of the captions, which is just super, super helpful. There's also the basic needs center where you can go to get basic needs like food, you can get financial counseling there. They just have a lot of really fantastic resources. And one thing that I always say is that if you ask or if you reach out and look for it, the resource is there. So that's my best advice is really to reach out. And if you need anything, it is probably there and someone is willing to give it. Yeah, definitely. It's really important to reach out to find the resources that you may need. Now, you may be wondering, how do I get involved in this amazing university? Well, there's so many opportunities for you to get involved. First of all, we have over 1,000 student organizations. Seneca's a dance companies are just a few of them. My, my Mike Mann and Cal Spirit groups are just a few of the organizations you may get involved in. There's also a lot of volunteering opportunities. For example, just Every semester, there's a lot of um, volunteer projects that happen. I think some of our other fellow ambassadors have been um, leaders in these volunteering um, excursions themselves. You can also find campus employment or work study, and the Career Center can help you with that as well. The Career Center also helps you find work after you've graduated Berkeley, which is really nice. You, there's also no shortage of internships since we are in the San Francisco Bay Area and because of our proximity to Silicon Valley. Over, over winter break, actually, I had an internship with an intellectual property law firm, so that was really nice. If you're interested in, um, if you're interested in going outside of the United States to study, we have study abroad programs that can range from a semester to a year in a different um, location. And of course, you can also explore the San Francisco Bay Area. I've definitely found places that I haven't seen before and I've lived here for like six years. So it's really nice to discover new places just by being at Berkeley. 
Totally, and that same kind of student life extends to things like athletics. We have multiple levels of competition. We actually have division one, which is usually where you're recruited out of high school. There's also club, which is competitive, but you know, a, a bit of a step down from that division one. And then also intramural or IM and recreational sports, which is really just a great way to build a community, meet people and have fun while being active. And there's all sorts of sports that you can do for all of these, you know, swimming and volleyball. I know that a lot of people do like ultimate frisbee at an intramural level, which can be really exciting. There's also California Memorial Stadium, which houses the Simpson High Performance Center for student athletes, as well as the Athletic Study Center to really make sure that students, student athletes have all of the, you know, different resources that they need in order to succeed both on the field and in school. There's Haas Pavilion, which is where our gymnastics, volleyball, and basketball teams play. And I personally, I cannot wait for things to reopen so that I can watch our incredible gymnastics teams. I used to do gymnastics and I think that they are just the coolest ever. There's also the recreational sports facility, which is a gym that any students can use regardless of whether you're in sports or not. They have things like cardio dance classes and weight rooms, many different resources for students to use to stay active and just you know, burn off some stress sometimes. And a little fun fact for all of you is that we actually, as a school, have won 207 Olympic medals, which I think is just amazing. <laughs> now, in terms of building our community in this virtual learning space, we've talked about this a little already, but you can engage with each other on social media networks. Um, our department ourselves, we we have a bear talk blog where you can look at our different perspectives and our different stories, which is really nice. I write there. You should check out my articles. Um, there's also different ways that student um, groups and clubs meet throughout um, throughout the week. So they'll set up Zoom events, um, set up meetings throughout um, the week for Zoom. And there's also different um, webinars that departments host so that there's um, so for example, there's um, professional developments hosted by different departments, um, administrative departments across campus. And the Career Center has personally had, has personally had a lot of really good um, uh, career, career preparation workshops to do. And we also have had Golden Bear orientation online. Um, I was an orientation leader before, um, before the pandemic hit, but um, I know some of my friends who are orientation leaders who have done a lot of work to make sure that orientation is still just as immersive as it was um, in, um, in person, yeah. Totally. We also have a ton of different libraries and research. We mentioned a little earlier that we are a public research institution. So you might, you know, associate that with research. You wouldn't be wrong. So we have 24 official libraries on campus with 13 plus million volumes, which is insane. I personally love libraries. I feel like they make me feel like Harry Potter, you know, just kind of studying and having a great time. It's my goal actually to go to all 24 libraries and I've done 18. So hopefully next year as things begin to reopen, I can reach those other few libraries. There are also extensive online resources though. So I was writing a paper for my Italian class last year. And I remember I was able to go online and talk with the librarians and find a bunch of sources that I needed without actually having to step foot in a library, which is just super handy during a pandemic. We also have research, which is still happening today despite not being on campus. The undergraduate research apprenticeship program has all sorts of different projects that students can apply to at the beginning of each semester and this can be in absolutely any subject. It could be history, it could be you know social sciences, it could be biology or physics, absolutely whatever and they do a great job of kind of easing students into the research world, but there's also departmental opportunities. I know that the College of Natural Resources and the College of Engineering both have kind of their own research programs that they do. And there's also, you know, you can always just ask your professor if they need help with research. They might say, yes, it's happened. It has been known to occur. And just research is definitely something that I think around like 60% of Cal students get involved in. So definitely a great way to really get the most out of your undergrad experience.
And we'd also just like to give a special shout out to our two 2020 Nobel Prize winners. So we had a Professor Jennifer Doudna win the 2020 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for discovering a new method of genome editing called CRISPR. And Professor Reinhard Genzel won the 2020 Nobel Prize for Physics for his work with discovering the supermassive compact object at the center of our galaxy, also known as a black hole. So I just think that it is really cool, as I mentioned earlier, to have people who are such groundbreaking leaders in their fields be teaching you every single day. And yeah, just congratulations to both of them. Definitely, there's just so much you can do and so much to learn from in our university. And this is just some of the many campus highlights that we have. Um, personally for me, um, I like um, going into the city and I like going into nature, but I never thought of like combining these two like architectural aspects, but Berkeley does it so well. One minute you can be surrounded by buildings and the next minute you can just be surrounded by trees and enjoying the sunlight as it filters in through the leaves. And I really like that about our university. Not only that, um, we have a creek that runs throughout our campus, Strawberry Creek. It's really beautiful to see as I walk through campus, as well as, I mean, as I mentioned, we're in the San Francisco Bay Area, so there's no shortage of things to do and places to see while you're studying here at Berkeley. Awesome, thank you so much guys. So now we can jump into the Q&A portion. So thank you everyone for asking your questions throughout the tour. So the very first question we're gonna go with is for you Seneca. And the question is, are most classes taught by professors or TAs slash GSIs? So take it away. Yeah, absolutely. So kind of quickly, as I mentioned earlier, we kind of have two components to classes. There's lecture and then there's also discussion. I would say that typically lecture is taught by either a lecturer or a professor, and then usually TAs, also known as like graduate student instructors or GSIs as we call them at Berkeley, would teach the discussion section or the lab section or studio. And so in that respect, it's kind of I would say most classes are taught by professors or lecturers just because there are some classes that actually don't have a discussion section because they are quite small. I have a few classes like that. And so it's definitely a balance, but it really just depends on the style of the class and of course, how specific the class goes. As you get more specific, you are less likely to have discussion sections because it's probably just like 30 people in a very specific little niche category. I definitely will say as a senior, all my classes this year are all taught by professors and it's it happens to be all the same 30 kids who are doing atmospheric chemistry. So it, very small classes, all taught by professors and all professors are very nice too. They're all very cute. Anyway, that's just, that's that. Um, next question is for you, Naomi. And the question is, how does the large class size affect adjustment from smaller schools and how does the school support, you know, adjusting to bigger class sizes? That's honestly a really good question. I did mention earlier that even as someone from a larger school, I did have a little bit of trouble adjusting to it, but there are a, a lot of different programs that um, UC Berkeley provides to give um, students from smaller schools um, a way to ease themselves into the structure of the school. So for example, one of my roommates, she actually had, she, uh, she actually, sorry, came from a graduating class of 62 and she participated in something known as the fall program for freshmen or FPF for short. And my, um, and my roommate said that this really helped her ease into it because um, in the fall program for freshmen, you have a cohort of around 200 students taking about the same courses. So usually um, in your first year, you'll take a lot of intro courses, which may have a larger amount of students, which also may feel overwhelming at first. So for example, I was taking an intro to political science class that had around 400 people within that class, but my roommate who was taking that same class in the fall program for freshmen only took it with around 150 to 200 other people. So that's one of the many programs that UC Berkeley provides to really help you get situated and um, gather your bearings, um, as we say here. Yes, I was also an FPF and they really do help you out. I came from a graduating class of 1,200 and FPF was also was still there to like help me adjust to class. Cause also I didn't know anybody. So it's also a good way of doing that. Um, but anyway, so yeah, FPF. Um, so next question is for you Seneca. And the question is, what are some of your passions? How do you fulfill them at Berkeley? 
and or slash or what passions have you discovered at Berkeley that you did not know about yourself before? Totally. This is such a good question. I feel like one thing that I really did not think about, like even when I was a sophomore and a freshman at Berkeley, it was how important it is to have like a creative outlet, at least for me, like I cannot just do school or just do, you know, one thing. I always need to kind of have another project going where it can be a little more creative or do something that I wouldn't be doing just ordinarily if I really wasn't doing anything outside of school. And so for me, dance was really important the first, you know, two years and then last year as well, just to kind of keep me grounded and make sure that I was, you know, staying active and getting out there and meeting new people instead of kind of being stuck in a rut. Cause I feel like it can be easy in college to get kind of bogged down by all of the different things you have to do. You're being an adult, you're managing all of this for the first time. And so for me, dance was really important just to kind of like learn that, okay, I need to be doing something creative or I will go crazy. <laughs> um, and then also just something I think that I've discovered at Berkeley that I really like didn't know about before was um, honestly this. <laughs> um, I really used to hate public speaking and kind of was always unsure when I was giving advice to people because I'm like, okay, who knows? Everyone's different. And I think that being a campus ambassador has really allowed me to break out of my shell a little bit, become a little bit more confident when I'm speaking to the public or just talking about different things in general. And so, yeah, I would say my main tip is just get involved and your passions will kind of find you along the way. If you don't like something, you don't have to do it for more than one semester. So that's kind of how Berkeley has allowed me to explore it a bit. Awesome. Thank you, Seneca. I can't really add much more to that just because you summed it up so nicely. Um, so now we're going to the very end of the tour. And so this is a question that someone asked, but also something that we usually do. Why did you all choose Berkeley over other schools or better way, the way we put it is what is your Berkeley story? So Naomi, Naomi, you can go first and then Seneca just pick it up when Naomi is done. Yeah, definitely. I can agree a lot with what Seneca said about not expecting to be a campus ambassador. I never expected to um, lead tours or lead cheers in front of thousands of Cal fans, but here I am doing it still today. Um, but something that made um, Berkeley get on my radar was not the dozens of field trips that my high school has made to Berkeley, but something from someone who's older than me. Um, this person is right now the drum major of Cal Band, actually. Um, she's a year older than me, so she was my senior in high school. And when I got accepted into Berkeley, she invited me over to just see what Berkeley's like and meet people who are taking classes that I may be interested in. And so I met her study group. And the thing that I really liked about Berkeley is that through this, through this day, I learned that the people at Berkeley can challenge me to become a better person. And that's something that I really um, found difficult to see in like a lot of different, um, in a lot of different ways. And I thought that being surrounded by an amazing group of people, a diverse group of people that can push me to do better and succeed is the college that I want to go to. And so I chose Berkeley and here I am. I became a campus ambassador and a mic man through my friends' encouragements. And honestly, if I didn't meet these people and I didn't have the experiences I had through Berkeley, I don't think I would have been this comfortable speaking to you all virtually. So that's my Berkeley story. I love that. I am like 100% in agreement. The people here at Berkeley like push you, they help you grow. And that's also the reason why I chose to came here. So I definitely was hesitant applying to Berkeley because I didn't really grow up with the knowledge of it. I am from kind of like Southern Central California. So it wasn't really on my radar, but I had a dream one night that I should apply. So I applied and then I got in, which was cool. <laughs> and then I was trying to kind of figure out like, okay, I have a few different schools that I'm really attached to. I really like all of them. What's gonna help me make a decision? And I ended up joining the incoming class of 2022 Facebook group. So for each class, there's kind of a Facebook group that you do where people will say like, hi, I'm Seneca. I love dance and I'm looking for a roommate and da 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 da. Um, and they'll just kind of like try and make friends. They'll post like a little bio about themselves, maybe with some pictures. 
And I remember reading through Berkeley's page specifically, and I was just blown away by how passionate and involved and driven everybody was. There were people who were talking about how they were like super into things that I had never even heard of before. And I remember just being like, wow, these people are super cool. I want to be friends with these people. I want to surround myself with them because I think that when you're making a decision about college, you want to make a decision for who you want to be. And so you try and you pick the people who are going to make you grow and who you're going to learn from and who can learn from you the best. And so for me, that was Berkeley and I decided to come here and it has been an amazing experience and it has held true. The people are the best part. So yeah, that is, that is my Berkeley story. <laughs> You guys have such cute little Berkeley stories. Mine's just, I wanted to beat my sister who got into UCLA, so I came to Berkeley, but still, you guys, so cute. Um, so anyway, so now we can wrap up. So thank you everyone for bearing with us. Ah, bears, um, bearing with us for the hour on this tour. Um, we're, so if you'd like to follow us on Instagram, you can at visit UC Berkeley, or if you, have, if you have any other questions that might just pop into your head now or when you're falling asleep you go wait a minute what about dining i don't know um you can email us at tor at berkeley.edu and a student ambassador will answer your question we also have a blog that our campus ambassadors write on is at their talk.berkeley.edu so they kind of share their experiences and you kind of go and read about them um also like i said this virtual visit is recorded but a lot of other virtual visits are available on our youtube channel at visit uc berkeley even virtual panels which basically just all q a questions so check that out um, also, if you want to learn about Berkeley, how we're um, uh, handling the pandemic or just about our COVID-19 resources, you can go to coronavirus.berkeley.edu. We've also been admitting women for 150 years here at Berkeley. You can read more about it at 150w.berkeley.edu. Um, if you want to read more about our admissions and about everything about admissions, because again, this is from the student perspective, more about admissions, go to admissions.berkeley.edu forward slash visit. Or you can also, if you want to check out any more panels and whatnot, go to visit.berkeley.edu. And basically, anything you want about Berkeley, you can probably type it in .berkeley.edu and you can find what you're looking for. Housing.berkeley.edu, dining.berkeley.edu, chemistry. You get it. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for sticking with us for the hour. And now we can end this tour off with the usual way that we end our tours off. Um, so Seneca and Naomi, if you want to unmute. Naomi, you should probably be leading this one, but I'll be doing it this time. Um, so um, so um, on the count of three, one, two, three, go Bears! go Bears! Thank you so much all and have a great rest of your day.